I found the top 10 easiest work from home jobs. And these are jobs that are going to be easy to land and in some cases also easy to do, right? So these are gonna be jobs where you're not having a manager breathe down your neck. You kind of just have to get the work done and as long as it's done on time, nobody cares how you do it. And these types of jobs are great for you if you wanna start a business on the side or you wanna educate yourself so you can get an even better job or you want to, you know, enjoy your life and have some free time, weirdo. I didn't say anything. And the first one on the list is going to be a free freelance writer. Now I know what you're thinking, freelance writing, it's not easy at all, not easy to land a job. And even if you are able to land a job, it's not easy to make a full-time income. Well, that's true for a lot of types of freelance writing. That's why you need to specialize. And right now there are podcasts that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars a year. There's YouTube channels that are estimated to be worth billions of dollars. Then there's single <laughs> newsletters, right? Literally just emails being sent out and are being sold for tens of millions of dollars easily. What? What the f and what do all of these things have in common? Content writing. And let me tell you, it is super hard to find a good YouTube script writer, for instance. And I would know because I'm a YouTube channel and I've been trying to hire script writers for years. And almost nobody has the skills necessary to do this well. So what's paying for one person, AKA YouTubers, content creators, etc., is an opportunity for you. So if you can get really good at YouTube script writing, I can almost guarantee you, you can make really good money off yeah. of this. So one website, you could check out is scripted.com. If you wanted to do YouTube specifically, there's a website called youtubejobs.co and it's actually ytjobs.co, not YouTube. And of course you could go the traditional route of writing and there's still a lot of opportunities there as well. But you do have to be pretty good. I gotta start practicing now. Now, freelance writers make about $52,000 a year. But like I said before, if you specialize, you can make a lot more than that. And writers are actually one of the happiest careers in the US. They're in the top 7% of careers. So yeah, overall, this is a really good one as long as you specialize, very important. And by the way, when I say specialize, I don't just mean becoming a YouTube script writer. It's probably better to specialize even further and become something like a personal finance YouTube script writer. That way you can really stand out. So overall, I'm gonna give this one an opportunity score of 7.5 out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be one of the many healthcare careers that are out there that are available and they're relatively easy to get into and that's going to be a patient coordinator, also known as a patient care coordinator. And this is basically where you kind of coordinate all the different parts of healthcare. So you're talking to the pharmacy, you're talking to the hospital, you might be talking to a clinic, talking to a doctor, etc., and coordinating them all together for a single patient. And this is done to ensure optimal care and support. It's been 20 seconds. Call it. So I could probably honestly do like a hundred different health careers in a single video because there's all these different niche health careers that are relatively easy to get into and they also pay relatively well. So I'm not gonna fill up this video with all these different health careers, but definitely check these out. There's a really great website called explorehealthcareers.org that you can look into to look at all the different healthcare options. And many of them, such as this one, you can actually do remotely. So patient care coordinators make about $46,000 a year and this is typically an entry level position, right? So you don't need a college degree, you don't need previous experience, although it probably would help to have some healthcare related experience doing something. <laughs> And typically, depending on the state you live in and their laws, there is going to be some training required, but usually the business that hires you will provide that training. So yeah, this is another pretty good one. There's so many of these little niche healthcare related careers and healthcare might not be as high earning as technology, but I think it's probably the most stable industry in the United States. So overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of seven out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be a business related career and that is inside sales specialist. And this is a position that's responsible for generating and closing sales leads. Always be closing. And this is usually through phone calls, emails, or virtual communication. And sales jobs are notorious for being relatively easy to get into. Now, one thing I will say about sales is it's not for everyone. In fact, most people watching this probably do not want to do sales for the rest of their career. But with that being said, I honestly have this belief that everybody should do at least one sales job in their lifetime because it's honestly such a character building exercise. To be really good as a salesperson, you have to understand understand the other person's perspective, their opinions, their thoughts, their emotions, etc. And then you have to explain why your product is a good fit for them. And this requires you to develop your emotional intelligence and your communication skills. Blood alone moves the wheels of history. 
So out of all the jobs I've had, I have to say sales is my favorite job. Would I want to do it forever? No, because it is relatively intense and you kind of have to be on point all the time. But with that being said, I am super happy I did a sales job. It taught me so many skills that I'll have for the rest of my life. Now, this typically is a closer type role. So you are going to be closing people on the phone usually, but usually it's a good idea to start off as an appointment setter. And there's kind of a million different names for the role, depending on the industry that you're in. But usually that's the person who kind of gathers leads. And in some cases, they'll cold call people. But usually you're having very short conversations and you're qualifying them to see if they're a good fit for your product. And then they get on the phone with the closer. Done and done. In this position, you are going to be the closer most likely. So you can go into this at the entry level, but usually people start off in the prospecting phase first, get a little bit of experience there, and then they move into closing. But yeah, sales is still awesome. I'll give it a nine out of 10 opportunity score. And by the way, I think the easiest way to get started in sales, and honestly, one of the better types of sales, if I'm being honest, is going to be tech sales. And you start in a position known as a business development representative, and that's basically the person who prospects leads. And I've actually interviewed a bunch of people on this channel that have been able to land jobs in tech sales, and they all use this company, Course Careers. And Course Careers has a free training, which I'll put down in the description, as well as the pinned comment below on all things related to tech sales. It's basically gonna answer any question that you have on the career. And they also have a cohort based program that costs $500. Many people have been able to get jobs with this program. And if you want to check that out, I do have a $50 off coupon, which is Shane 50. I'll put that down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. So the next one on the list is going to be a marketing assistant. Here's a few job opportunities that may be available for this position. And basically, you're going to be assisting them in marketing efforts. So things like market research, social media management, campaign coordination, and data data analysis. In this career, you could expect to make about $46,000 a year. So this is an entry level marketing career. And these are still relatively easy to get into. You don't need a college degree, you don't need previous experience, and you don't need any certificates or certifications. Well, sign me up. And marketing is another one of those skills very similar to sales, where if you learn it, it's going to help you throughout the rest of your life. So overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of nine out of 10. The next one on the list is a digital product manager. And in this role, you're going to be responsible for the development, implementation, and success of digital products. So this could be something like websites, mobile applications, software, some kind of course, etc. Now, I thought I would add one kind of mid-level career in here because this one is not entry level. It's not even close. But the reason I wanted to add this is just to show you it's not that hard to get into this career. In fact, I've seen people get into this type of role in around three to four years. <laughs> How? And a lot of the time, people will start off in like a data analytics role, maybe a sales role or a marketing role, and then they'll move move into this as they progress throughout their career. And you can make about $163,000 a year doing this. What the f so pretty freaking good. And to add on top of that, this is one of those careers that's kind of like entrepreneurship with training wheels. So you kind of have to oversee everything. You might have to see the engineers, the operations, the marketing and the sales, and you have to have a decent understanding of all of them. So obviously this isn't going to be the easiest one to get into, but I wanted to put this on the list just to show you that even for the harder careers, if you follow the right career path, you can get in relatively quickly. I'll give this one an eight out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be a newer career that is actually really really blowing up right now. And I don't know if you've noticed accounts like Alex Hormozzi, Andrew Tate, or Iman Godzi, and how they've used shorts to blow up their entire social media presence. You know, maybe you've been under a rock and you haven't noticed any of those people, but shorts are absolutely massive and they are a great way for you to get views on your channel. And if you can get really good at creating shorts for other people, they will hire you and they'll pay you good money. For instance, Alex Hormozzi was quoted as saying that he spends about $70,000 a month just on his content creation team. And I think he said something along the lines of he would have to spend two to $3 million to get the same amount of views if he did paid ads. So obviously people are getting an incredibly good ROI by doing this. Now, this is one of those jobs that you could do part-time, you could do as a freelancer, or you could find a full-time role. Or if you wanted to go really hard, you could make your own agency and sell this as a service. A lot of people are doing that right now. And content creators that are employed as a job in general make about $51,000 a year. So yeah, pretty good. This is a good one to look into. I would say this is a especially good if you're watching this and you live in a country that's not a first world English speaking country. This is an especially good opportunity for you. And it's really not that hard to learn how to edit shorts. In fact, there's literally software that is designed just to edit shorts. Learning Adobe Premiere or Final Cut is relatively difficult. 
but learning how to edit shorts isn't that hard. So overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of seven out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be a fact checker. And here's a few jobs that might be available. I'll have them pop up on the screen. Make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell because you know chances are if you're watching this like two weeks after it's posted, these jobs are not gonna be available anymore. So yeah, a fact checker is somebody who kind of checks dubious claims that are made online. And of course, this can be very controversial because you know who's gonna fact check the fact checkers. But with that being said, I do think overall it is a net positive. And if you disagree with the fact checkers, why don't you become one yourself? You are wrong! All of you are wrong! And they make pretty good money, about $62,000 a year. And this is another position that you don't have to have a college degree or previous experience to get into. But with that being said, a college degree and previous experience is typically preferred. So overall, this is a pretty decent one to look into. I'll give it a seven out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be a research assistant. And here's a couple job opportunities here. And basically you're gonna be supporting scholars and professors and research when it comes to collecting and analyzing data. And research assistants make about $45,000 a year. Now, this is one of those careers that typically do require a degree. I mean, you're doing research, you may even be working for a university, so you probably want to have a degree. But with that being said, there's a lot of people who watch my channel that have a degree and maybe they got a useless degree. They're not very happy with the job prospects. And this might be a good one to look into. So I'll give this one an opportunity score of seven out of 10. And last, let's talk about a career that a lot of people make fun of, but it's honestly one of the easiest jobs to get your foot in the door and get that first work from home or remote job. And that is customer support representative representative. This is one that just about nobody wants to do, but it's honestly one of the best ones. If you have zero experience, zero degree, you don't have any skills, just get a customer support representative job. You can work remote and build your skills from there. And I've seen people get jobs here in like three days, right? They apply for a job and like three days later they have it. So this is one of the easier ones to get a job with as well. And customer support makes about $46,000 a year. So this is probably not something you want to do for the rest of your life, unless you enjoy dealing with Karens. Man, a jerk! But with that being said, it can be a good opportunity for a few years. And this video is about the easiest work from home jobs, and this is one of the easiest ones that you can possibly land. So for that reason, I'll give this one an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Now, if you haven't seen it already, I did have a video that talks about work from home job companies that are almost always hiring. And you can check that out by clicking right here.